All right, guys, let's talk SPRs, Special Purpose Rifles. We're going to be doing some videos this summer on SBRs, Reckeys, SPRs, DMRs, but in all honesty, uh, in my opinion, I think every rifle that we design, every rifle that we build, every rifle that we ultimately use is an SPR, a Special Purpose Rifle designed for a specific application. And without getting into too much detail regarding on what all those rifles are, we're just gonna be doing videos on them and explaining to you guys how we use them and why we use them. This particular rifle, guys, and, and kind of a disclaimer real quick without getting too uh, off topic. I, I've always been an AR guy ever since uh, I was in grade school. I have enjoyed the platform. I've liked the platform and i've built ars you know not for a profession just for fun over the past 20 30 years we have always been bolt guys also a lot of you guys that see the videos the predator hunting suppressed productions that i do we do run a lot of bolt guns for the reliability aspect and the precision aspect but that's for another video this video i want to take a look at an spr that i put together for i would say this is close to mid-range shots with mid-range being kind of on the on the longer edge of the shot spectrum with the the capabilities of a 223 that's what i wanted to design this for the last video that i did on on one of my ar builds was another special purpose rifle that i designated the truck gun it was a pretty badass gun i enjoyed doing it but I find myself going back to this build more often than the, the truck gun video. And for that, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with that, I'll be sure to post a link to that at the either at the end of this video or somewhere throughout the video so you guys can uh, enjoy the intro that we put together for you there. This gun is a uh, uh, built around some high-end components. I, I like the, the Knight's Armament. I like the Noveski. I know for a lot of guys, unfortunately, it's kind of out of their their price range, but I've owned numerous SR25s. I've got an MK11 Mod O. I have a, a Noveski switch block SBR, and this rifle is kind of a combo of both, and we'll get into that. Uh, starting with the kind of the, the base of the rifle is a Noveski NT4 matched Gen 1 upper and lower. I bought that on Gunbroker. And then I kind of built out from there. I, uh, I like it. Of course, I think that the newer mods, the Gen 4 on my SBR has a lot more options that are a lot more functional that will be a lot nicer. But for the purpose of this rifle, I like it. It works really good. The only thing that I really did to, in a way, modify the capabilities of this matched set is to add a Troy Industries mag release an ambidextrous troy industries mag release i did have an amb bolt catch on it but i didn't like how it flowed i didn't like how it worked on this rifle so i deleted it i took it off going into the internals i have a midwest industries enhanced bolt carrier group that's black nitride works works great a little bit more money but i think for the options that it provides it's, provides it's worth it i have a Radian Technologies Raptor SD charge handle. This is designed for suppressor use and it's supposed to kind of eliminate blowback. I've used PRI Gas Buster charge handles. I've got a, a Silencer Co. Ambi uh, charge handle that's supposed to do the same thing, but it seems like you always get gas blowback with systems like this. I do have a flat high flow end cap for the suppressor. We'll get into that as, as this review progresses. But this is a, a nice charge handle and it does alleviate some of the blowback. It, it does. My kid was shooting it the other night and he got a little bit of gas in his eye, but uh, considering the alternative, it's, it's worth a look. I also have uh, a Radian Technologies uh, 45 degree safety selector that's just a personal preference my first 45 uh, safety selector was on a carbine that's behind me here i just wanted to try it i was never really familiar with them and i got used to it and i like it 
nothing against the 90. It's not like the speed of a 45 throw is going to be substantially better, but I just decided to go with it because I kind of got used to it. Looking at the trigger, this is a trigger tech diamond. It's curved and we are at 1.5 to four pounds of adjustable pull. We're, I, I've used a lot of different triggers, guys, not only in bolt guns, but different ARs. I've got a CMMM or a CMMG. I've got uh, 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 Brooks and Andy. I've got a lot of trigger tech, Jewel, Timney. We've just started using some trigger techs in our bolt guns and really, really like the, the crisp performance that they offer. So I wanted to try it in an AR platform. And so far, so good. It works, you know, I've probably got about a thousand rounds down it. It works nice. I like the feel, zero creep. If you're trying to shoot groups or, or do some kind of precision work with it, I definitely think a trigger upgrade like this is the way to go. Of course, it's spendy, but ultimately you get what you pay for. Taking a look back here, this is a, uh, underneath the stock, this is a 2A, eight position carbine length buffer tube. On top of that buffer tube, or sorry, let's go inside of it first. Inside of the buffer tube is a Geisley SPR 42 braided wire spring with a combo that included the H2 buffer. Of course, you guys are familiar with the different weights of buffers. I opted for the H2 weight because on the gas system, on the barrel length suppressed, that I thought was going to be optimized for that, that buffer weight. Uh, it, it's very smooth cycling. It's the first time I've actually ran that, that buffer spring combo. I've ran like a tub spring, some other custom springs. JP Enterprise, I think, has one that I used a while ago on some older ARs. Uh, I like it. The, the stock is a Bravo Company Gunfighter Sop Mod Design Motto. I like the Sop Mod. I just like the cheek weld. I kind of, I like how it angles out as opposed to like a standard A2 positional stock. It just gives me a, a more of a feel. Maybe I'm used to my bolt guns with the adjustable cheek weld, but I, I that's just a personal preference and I like that that option. While we're here, no, we'll talk about that site when we get to it. So you heard me mention Knight's Armament. I like that company. I think it's more, you know, Noveski Knights, it's a Gucci brand without going down uh, too far down that, that rabbit hole. You, you're, you're paying a lot of money and you would like to hope that the quality is there as well. And, and most of the time I would say that it is. But this is a Knights Armament URX3, a 12.5 inch rail that's free floating. It's a two piece. I should have recorded putting it together. Takes a goofy ass barrel nut. You have to spend $150 to get the barrel nut wrench from Knights just so it works, which is, all, it's stupid. But I, I wanted it. I liked the design. I liked the way it looked. I liked the way it, it was gonna flow with how I put this rifle together. So I spent $950 for it on GunBroker. Well, once again, probably a, a, not a real smart decision if you're on a budget, but this isn't a budget build. Uh, taking a, a closer look, there's options on it here. We have the integrated machined flush cups for QD swivels. We have a pick rail on the top, and then we also have kind of, I would say it's about a quarter of the length of this rail where you have a pick rail on the bottom and on the sides. The top end of the fore end of the, of the rail, we have, it's kind of like an integrated front side is what it is. That, that it's a legit front sight. You fold it down and it turns into part of the rail. If we want to talk about that a little bit, I do have a backup sight here and I have not put on the backup iron sight that I'm actually going to be using on this. So I just got a, a Noveski SBR switch block, a little 10.5 inch shorty, and it, con it came with Magpul Pro backup iron sights, fairly expensive. And I'm going to pull this Mark V off and use that as my backup iron sight here instead of this polymer, cheaper mag pull iron sight. I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well use 
if, if I have a, a build like this, I might as well use a little bit better quality backup iron sight, whether I need it or not. You, know, you probably never will, but it's, it's there for it. Just kind of my plans with that. Of course, we have Knight's uh, rail covers, if you will, on this with kind of a finger stop or a finger hook at the front. Uh, I, I like the feel of it and I like the design. And it, 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 like I said, it, it looks good on the rifle in my opinion. I think that's pretty much it when we're looking at the forend. You know, it's, it's noticeably nights with how, how the layout is, how they have the machined holes in the side, the, 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 the venting. And it's a, it's, it's a pretty cool setup, I think. Underneath the rail is another Noveski piece of equipment. This is a Noveski Recon barrel. It's a 16 inch, one in seven polygonal twist. There's some details on the polygonal twist, on the, poly, sorry, the polygonal riflings to be uh, precise, to be exact. But the reason that uh, I, I decided to go with this barrel is one, it's Noveski. It's, I believe, hammer forged, a little bit higher quality of a barrel. You pay for it. But a seven twist in an AR is going to allow me to run heavier rounds. Since I decided to, to really develop this rifle for you know, mid-range, maybe a little bit longer range shots, you have to take into consideration barrel length and twist. And what I wanted to do is be able to have the opportunity to stabilize heavier rounds. So this will, you know, if, if I can properly seat the bullet to mag length, you know, it'll stabilize 75 grain rounds, which they're not going to be mag length. But it is going to allow me to run up to like the 69 SMKs if I need to and doing reloads. It shoots very well. We're shooting just some, some factory 55 grain you know, Fiocchi's that are going 3,250 feet per second roughly, but I have reloaded for this. I just did some quick load development with 50 grain VMAXs and it shot, you know, easily sub MOA. Factory ammo, you know, we did some grouping, it's over an MOA, but if, you know, that's kind of the standard with factory ammo. We plan to reload for this. Awesome barrel, uh, I like it. You know, bead blasted gray, fits really nice with the rifle. Taking a look, it's some of the, the, you know, the add-on features, the mods that I did. Let's take a look at the light. This is a Surefire X300V. The V stands for Vampire. What this light allows me to do is I have a white visible light and I have an IR invisible light. And we do a lot of shooting with night vision just for fun, for training. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. We do a lot of hunting with night vision. We do a lot of navigation with night vision and therefore it just makes sense for us to use and equip some of our rifle system like some of our rifle systems like this to have upgrades that allow us to use night vision to its fullest, especially on dark nights when we don't have any kind of artificial light available to, you know, intensify the two to gather and produce a quality image. This helps us, you know, be able to, to do a lot of cool stuff at night. That's the Surefire uh, X300V. I do have a tail cap. I'll show you guys with some B-roll. It's got a switch. It allows me to keep it off so that if I accidentally hit the pressure pad, it doesn't come on, but I can flick the switch and it's at standby ready to go. I also have an off up here on the bell of the light so I can keep it off that way so nothing will come on. And then of course we have the pressure pad to turn it off and on. We can push the pressure pad and it's on as long as you maintain the pressure or there's a button underneath, you push the button and it will stay locked on uh, until you deactivate it. Let's take a look at the optic here. This is Leupold's newest Mark V HD. This is the two to 10 by 30. It's got a 35 millimeter tube. It's just like every other Mark V in the series. We have personally ran the 3.6 to 18. We've ran the five to 25 and we've ran the seven to 35. All of them are, are crazy lightweight optics with a superior glass, awesome glass, awesome tracking. I've already beat this turret to shit. It's already scratched up. Uh, there's, there's essentially three indicators per rev that show you, which I'm never going to do on this gun. I'm never going to dial up that much probably, but it, it's a, it's an awesome setup. This particular scope, 
has an illuminated reticle, which I personally highly recommend if you're going to be running a first focal plane optic, and we'll probably do a video on that. It, it, it helps to have illumination because for those of you guys that aren't familiar with first focal plane, when you magnify it, when you, when you demagnify, when you zoom out, your crosshairs get really small. And in low light conditions, you can't see them. It, you just can't. With the, the option and availability of illumination, you can see your crosshairs, you can see where they inter, intersect and it actually makes them usable. This particular reticle is the first focal plane TMR. Uh, there's, uh, I believe, half ML, or sorry, half mil hashes. 10 mil is, is labeled, 20 mil is labeled, and way down at the bottom, 30 mil is labeled. So it's, it's, it's decent for holdover if you need to, or you can, you know, dial up. We do both. The Mark V HD is mounted with Loopholds IMS mount here. This is the integrated mounting system from Loophold, essentially, it's just a unimount. I've ran some Badger Ordnance unimounts. I've ran um, Night Force unimounts. They're, they're aluminum and they're titanium version. And it, it's, they're one and the same. This has zero cant. I wasn't concerned with having any kind of a cant because I'm not going to be utilizing it. I don't need to have an extra Tony MOA to hold or dial because this platform isn't isn't designed for that it's it's not really capable of that that kind of distance on top of the ims mount we have my delta point pro nv capable so what that is is it's it's loopholes delta point pro with some night vision settings it, it basically takes the red dot to its to, to a dimmer level than the traditional Delta Point Pro so that it doesn't really blow out your night vision. And when I say to blow out, I don't mean ruin your night vision. I just mean uh, it's, it's a lot more feasible. It's a lot easier to see and it, it works good. I have both versions, the Delta Point Pro and the NV model, and you can definitely tell the differences. This has uh, just the top ring and what they call what Leupold calls this is just the, the Delta Point Pro top mount. You have to make sure that you get it for the right millimeter tube. Of course, the Mark V series HDs are a 35 millimeter tube, so I got the 35 millimeter top mount. This allows you to mount the Delta Point Pro straight up or at a 45 degree on the right side or a 45 degree on the left side. I have mine on the right side. I'm a right sh right hand shooter, so it's easy for me to turn it like that. It, it's a it's a slick setup. I really like that for doing close range target work. It takes a little bit to get used to, but the repetitions that you get in, eventually you bring it up, and the red dot is right there. It's a uh, it's a cool system to use and and really fun to practice with. Take a look at the bipod. This is modular driven technologies double pull in short, for abbreviation MDT. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that. A very high-end tripod or bipod, sorry. There's a lot of adjustment here. Not only can't the angles of your rifle, but rapid deployment of the legs if you get into a certain position. We'll show you that. We're going to be doing a review on bipods. We have ran a lot of the Harris S's over the past. We've ran and still do run a lot of the Atlas, the Atlas Cal, some of the standard Atlas units, the, the, the shorter and the longer versions and they're they're all good but mdt uh, hopefully we can kind of get them on board with us and work with us a little bit in some of our videos because the capabilities of a bipod like this will really aid in our success i think throughout the year of of predator hunting with the way that we hunt prone and just do positional shooting it's a slick very adjustable bipod the sling here, the sling of my choice on this particular rifle is the Warrior Poet Society sling. It's got, I have two flush cups on it. Oh, I can attach it to my SOP mod and then I can also attach the, the quick detach sling swivel on the fore end of the URX3 or more towards the rear here if I want to uh, attach it accordingly for whatever position I'm in or whatever I'm doing if I'm riding bike. You know, if we're just walking, if we're doing positional shooting or whatnot, or hunting. But I like this sling. It's a little bit more uh, of, a, of a quality build, I would say, than, than some of my other slings. I've got some mag pulls, uh, some, I, I can't remember, there's a couple other slings that we had too as well. But I like how this has 
a little bit of a bungee, a little bit of a shock in it so that you can, you can string it up, you can pull it, you can get it tied into your shoulder pocket. And there's a little bit of assistance there for the hold. All right, guys, last but not least, let's take a look at the suppressor real quick. This is a CGS Helios QDTI Chaos Group Supply, the first 3D printed suppressor that I've owned. The cool thing about this is not only it's the first 3D printed titanium suppressor that I own, it's lightweight, it's, it's an awesome can, but the suppressors that we use that we actually really enjoy and that we find ourselves always going back to have a cast baffle system, a very intricate baffle system that you literally can't machine. And if you did, it wouldn't be worth the time to do it. But now with the technology and the advancements in it, being able to 3D print, really the possibilities are endless regarding what they can do inside of a suppressor regarding the baffle design. And it's, it's really cool to see this. The end caps that came with this are just a standard end cap, and I also have a high flow end cap, which essentially has a bunch of holes machined around the outside. It lets a lot of the gases out, but there's a compromise there. With more gases out, you get a decrease in sound suppression, so it's gonna be a little bit louder, but you are gonna get a lot less blowback, so that's just kind of for you to decide. Either way, this thing operates fine. You just do get a little more, more blowback with the, the traditional style end cap versus the high flow. How I set this up, and I'll show you guys in video overlay, is I have a Reardon Manufacturing Atlas. It threads right into the hub of the suppressor, inch and three eighths. And then the, what that allows me to do is have somewhat of a quick attach or quick detach system with the Reardon Manufacturing SPB. That's, that's the, the single point break that I have covering my threads. The whole mindset that I had behind that isn't really for the sole purpose of having some kind of a quick attach or quick detach system. It's for the sole purpose of if I wanna break this rifle down, if I need to throw this rifle in, or for some reason something happens to the suppressor, I'm not just shooting a rifle with exposed threads. I have the threads covered. It's still functional with a, a, a single port break. And like I said, I can throw it around without having to worry about my threads being messed up on my good Nevesky barrel. It works awesome. Good setup, uh, awesome, awesome features. And I, I like the look of it with and without the suppressor, regardless of the, the functionality. It's, it's, it works very well. And we will be doing a review on suppressors on the YouTube channel, just strictly going over why I, 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 I prefer direct thread suppressors, you know, versus quick detach. And we'll go into detail on that on a couple of videos. But that's really, guys, the rundown of my SPR, my special purpose rifle built around the AR platform. Let's go shoot it. All right, we're just setting up our targets here real quick. We have some steel from <coughs> Target Hanging Solutions. Idiots with his hangers too. Three on the coyote. 400 yards. You ready? Yep. What was that first one? Popper? First one was a popper. I was going to yeah. say you could hear that.
stop till it stops. Oh, gas is in my eye. <laughs> yes. Get, that's all right. Shoot it. There you go. Oh, you're in that pretty good. As always, fellas, I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you found it entertaining, but more importantly, I hope you found it informational. Be sure to subscribe to the O'Neill Ops YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook as well as Instagram. Until next time, we're out.